everybody and welcome back. This is my first installment of Evil Ted Talks where I get to do uh, answer your questions. And I've been getting, uh, first of all, before I go any further, I want to thank everybody on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for reposting how to make a foam helmet. I, I, it's been going quite crazy. I've been getting uh, thousands of subscribers, thousands of views, great comments, and thus is why I created uh, my questions and answers. And I've been getting a lot of them. But anyway, once again, guys, thank you so much. Uh, first question is people ask me, hey, Ted, uh, if I don't have a head cast, how can I make a helmet to do a pattern off of? Um, below, I'm going to send you some links where you can buy a head cast. But if you're like me, when I start out, it was relatively inexpensive, didn't have a lot of money, uh, you get a friend, a friend you can trust, and you get uh, the <laughs> to put uh, aluminum foil and duct tape on your head. And then when it's all done, you can slip it off, like so, and uh, stuff it either with poly fiber or uh, some clothing or a towel, draw your lines on, and cut out with a pair of scissors. But don't forget to do your hash marks. And that would work. Also, the second question I've been getting a lot of is, um, once I make my pattern, I've noticed that my helmet's really tight fitting and snug, can I make my pattern larger? And the answer is yes, you can. And once you get it transferred to paper, I will show you how to do that right now. Okay, what you do is we have our original pattern we made for the helmet, and I lay this down, and what I've done is I've traced this, so we have the original pattern, now we traced onto a new piece of paper, because you're actually gonna make this larger. So what I do first is these little, uh, your registration marks, you wanna go and make them longer, like that. See, you can see that? Because what you have to do, you make this a little bit bigger, but you you can make it bigger, but you do not want to lose those marks. So I always go right in the center of the triangle, as you can see right there. I'm making a line. Okay, and so I'm gonna do that with this. So I'm gonna do it all the way around on our little hash marks. I take this line, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna do a quarter. I know you're probably saying that doesn't seem like a lot. Make a little quarter mark here. And the reason I do a quarter is because once you do this on both sides, because this paper pattern is going to be the both for the right and the left. And by doing this twice, two quarters, boom, you have a half inch. Therefore, your helmet will be a half inch bigger. Because when you make these things like you discover probably directly off your head, it's going to be a little snug. So, my little marks. I go and just line them up like so. Therefore, it's nice and even. Like so. Like that. Like that. And now, like this. Right on our new line. <coughs> and our dart does not change. It's going to go right out with that. Like so. And... See the pattern and see these lines and we transfer it. Now, these darts, we do them here because they're a little taller. So we just do this. So therefore, you do not lose your registration marks. The helmet is officially now a little bit bigger, but now that you have your marks realigned, it'll, it'll, you put them right back in the same spot yeah. that you, you will not, it will not uh, the shape of the helmet will not change on you. There you go. Now, there's the paper pattern like you had originally before. And by adding three eighths, this will make a half inch bigger on your whole helmet.
people have been asking me questions about my bevel cuts. There's really clean bevels. And for example, here's a pattern I made just, just to show you. Let's say we're going to put this on a costume. And I cut this out on foam. And some people will really put a bevel on these. Now, granted, you could, like I said, draw a line and cut. Or you can sand. But since you've already made your pa paper pattern, you can make your bevel as you cut that. So example, we're going to do a piece here. We want this part to be smooth. So I'm going to do this. Like so, I'm going to lay my pattern down. And I do this because I want this is how I do so I can get some nice 45 degree patterns on the uh, there. Now, what we do is I have my sharpener, which I've showed you guys the links below, and my mat knife right here. And what I like to do when you sharpen this is you get old, get old WD 40. And I put a little on the, the, the sanding. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. That wets it. What I do is I take my blade at a 40, like a slight 45, towards me, both sides. Make this nice and sharp. And when I mean sharp, I mean this will be exactly sharp. Take a little excess foam, wipe off the, because uh, now this bad boy is sharp. So I line up my sharpie line, like so. And when I'm cutting, I just do a, I do my 45 on this side. See, nice and sharp. And with this side, line it up. Okay, let's do this side first. So the triangle here, let's see this guy here. Like that, line it up. Once again, tint is slight 45, touching the table. And then, 45 again on the table. Right. And this last line right back here. Once again, my blade, do a slight 45 against my middle edge. And voila, look at that, see? Look at that, nice clean 45. And trust me, you can sand and carve and you'll never get them this clean. This gives up some really nice mechanical edge to it, but this is uh, how I kind of like do my 45s. Okay, another question I get a lot of is where do I buy different thicknesses of foam? Well, I work in the industry and I always order at you know, giant wholesale warehouses and uh, buy foam. For all you craftspeople and cosplayers out there, um, you can go to uh, craft stores, art stores, and you can pick up smaller sheets. This is where I get these out. Uh, we have uh, one out here in Los Angeles called Michael's, and they, uh, you can buy different thicknesses of foams. This I get uh, 3 8 and uh, 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters. You get various thickness. It comes in different colors of your choosing. Also, you can buy in bulk, go to, a, there's a Pet Boys auto stores, and you can buy in uh, giant rolls of 3 8, 3 8 inch thickness of foam. And right here, this is uh, anti-fatigue floor mat foam. And I found this at a hardware store, this is at Pet, I'm sorry, not hardware, but uh, automotive store, Pet Boys. This whole roll was $20. I can build a whole costume out of that, which is great. Also, <clears throat> another question I get a lot of, which I know a lot of people that can't seem to understand, but Ask me about my seams. How to make? Uh, how? What do you do about seams? Like I said in the video, when you have two pieces of foam and you glue them together, you got to make sure that they're nice and flush. Two pieces together, nice and smooth. And once you do that, you got to make sure that it's flush. Because sometimes when you do that, it might get a little stepped. So you got this. You glue them together and make sure they're flush. And sometimes you might have a little bit of a lip or edge on that, and you can take a piece of sandpaper or 220, and you can sand that edge down and clean up. But uh, once you get the seam down, uh, seam relatively smooth, you can seal it with plastic dip or balloon light tux. Another question I get a lot of is people ask me, what kind of automotive paint do I use? Uh, this is um, Perfect Match. It's uh, Dupla Automotive Car Color. But the only reason I use automotive is for metallic finishes. But you also can use acrylic. Acrylic paints are great too. They have different variations of metallics and acrylic too. Um, it's great because metallic can be put on really thin. It's flexible. But um, another great uh, brand is Krylon Fusion, which is made for plastics. And you can spray that stuff on. It comes in various colors. But one of my tricks I can do is when I'm spraying like body armor or forearm pieces to prevent it from cracking. I like to use plastic dip in clear. They do plastic dip also in clear, and this makes it a clear, flexible bond over your paint. 
So once you get it all done, you can seal it with a clear plastic tip and it makes it more durable, more flexible. Well, that concludes uh, Evil Ted Talks, questions and answers. I want to thank everybody for uh, subscribing and also people have been requesting specific helmets and things to make and I appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the input you all have given me, but for, and I'll do more videos about certain things to make, but if you see something you like, trust me, if you stick to it and keep cutting and gluing and pasting, you'll get it. You might fail, but that's how you, that's how you learn. Failing is, if you just do everything the first time and succeed, expecting to succeed, that's not going to happen. Keep at it. What you want to do, make it, figure it out, play with it, and you will get it. Anyway, I'm babbling because I want to wrap it up because this helmet I made, I am giving away to the 1,042 subscriber. Who is that? That's Filmmaker1 here on YouTube. I want to say, yes, yeah, he's like, what, me? Yes, you. And I'll tell you the thing, I hope your head's the same size as mine because this is really snug on my head. But if it isn't, I will make you a new one. But once again, everybody, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I have more videos coming. Catch you guys on the Evil Ted channel.